Hi, my name is Dan Greenberg. I'm an assistant professor of Chinese art at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. I am the curator of this exhibition that's entitled Traces of Time, the Art of Feng Chi. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the overall layout of this exhibition and walk you through it piece by piece. This exhibition is divided into four sections that track a single idea in Feng Ming Chip's calligraphy um, from his most traditional work seen here to his latest series entitled Number Series. This work here um, is in what we would consider to be a traditional style of calligraphy. It's mounted on a hanging scroll. It's a dui lian. It's a couplet. It's two pieces. And it says, the hollow center of bamboo contains nothing. Its joints are obstructions. So, in this work, we're seeing um, Feng Ming Chip playing with the idea of a bamboo within traditional Chinese culture, which is meant to be emblematic of a gentleman. Instead of looking at its beautiful outside appearance, Feng is turning his gaze to the structure of the bamboo and saying that the inside, the core, is hollow and it lacks substance. So despite the fact that the bamboo and scholars and scholarly culture has a kind of cachet, maybe this hollow center and the joints, they're real obstructions to creativity, to expression, uh, this sort of thing. What's interesting is that this idea that he has is expressed through the calligraphy itself. There are no joints in this calligraphy. Each of these characters is comprised of strokes with no solid breaks or bends, no joints at all. The way we want to talk about this with reference to the entire exhibition is to think about the way that this traditional calligraphy embeds time. Meaning that if you know the stroke order of the characters, you can follow the way that the artist has moved, how he has created this work, stroke by stroke from beginning to end. Time is embedded in this flat, static, two-dimensional work. This is a feature that's unique to the medium of Shu Fa. This is unique to this artistic genre. But if you don't have an understanding of Chinese culture, is it possible to still have time embedded? We're going to move from this to the next section and see how Feng Chip is moving this idea about time to other kinds of work. In this second section of the exhibition, we're looking at Feng Ming Chip's experiments using traditional materials, so ink and paper, but using unconventional styles and unconventional content. In this example, which is music script, we see that although Feng is using the uh, strokes that you'd associate with traditional calligraphy, he's also incorporating elements that are taken from musical notation. These rests, these dots, these rhythms, this symbolic system is embedded in the work, giving the poetry a second kind of rhythmic structure in addition to the rhythm of the characters themselves. Meaning, Feng Ming Chip is thinking about how can one embed time in ways that are still connected to Shu Fa in its traditional form, but embed different understandings, different approaches to time, and that's music scripts. In this example here, we see a script that Feng Ming Chip calls piled meal script. Feng Ming Chip has invented over 120 different styles of scripts, meaning each one of them is different. It has its own characteristics. In this style, he uses just the tip of the brush to make these strokes that sort of sit upon each other. They look as if they're the needles of a pine tree that have fallen on the ground and are laying atop each other. Hence, piled needle script. You can follow the characters and the rhythm of its construction, but at the same time, he is breaking down the legibility of this poem and giving you another way to see the application of these strokes first, and then second, one layer atop the next. Time is being embedded in the work, but being embedded 
in a different way, a new way, and an innovative way that we haven't seen before. In the third section of the exhibition, we look at works that are created using non-traditional processes. These are processes that Ang Ming Chip has invented himself, and they're ways of embedding time that are new. They allow us to see the artist's process and the way he has created these works layer by layer, still showing us himself working through time, but in ways that are completely different from what has come before. This example, Moore Mall, has a sort of sonic play at work. More, mall, mall. So three words that sound the same across English and Chinese. Um, but what's interesting here is this use of rubbing script. This is an innovative uh, style that was created by Feng Minxiu, where he will first write these words using water alone. After he's written more and mall in water, he takes the still wet paper and he dips it in an ink bath while rolling it around a, a, a long tube, a tube, to make sure that the paper doesn't fall apart. When the wet paper hits the ink bath, the area that's been coated with water picks up ink in a different way than the rest of the paper, allowing these words to appear. Once this dries, he takes it out or off, off the roller, and then he writes this character on top and finishes it with seals. So we are able to see piece by piece, layer by layer, the artist's production process and the way that he's moving through time. This work over here is entitled The Mixed Script, which means that it's a combination of various techniques, various methods, and four separate scripts. The way that this piece was created is very complicated and involved a multi-step process. It's very systematic. First, what Feng Ming Chip did is he wrote this entire poem on a piece of paper, and then once that was dry, he took a second piece of paper and laid it atop it. On the uppermost piece of paper, he used water to write just the top portion of characters here. And while that was still wet, he used a wet brush loaded up with dark ink to paint over the top to allow these characters to emerge. This is called shadow script. In the second part, he traced, again, this is the top piece of paper on the bottom, he traced these characters in the middle with water, and then he put a stencil over the top and used a brush that's loaded with dry ink to paint over this middle section. The sharp edges are produced by the stencil, and the dry brush creates a different effect. This is called Sanskrit. In the third part, Feng laid a piece of paper over the top here and copied these characters using dark ink. And then, afterwards, he painted over them. This is black on black script. In the last part of this, he took these stencils and put them between the two pieces of paper. There's a stencil here, there's a stencil here. That obscured part of the characters so that he couldn't see them on the top. But moving systematically, he traced these characters and was able to produce these outlines in all the areas that he could see. And there you have it. One work that looks to be complete and whole, one work that seems to be of a piece, but in fact, it's four separate processes that are nearly seamless. You can see the fact that one transitions to the next, and at first glance, it looks as if he created them in a rhythm that follows the poem, perhaps, but it wasn't that way. So we have the process written into this work in a new and innovative way. This is the last section of the exhibition that showcases Feng Ming Chip's experiments with numbers. So all of these works are in 
number series. This large work is emblematic of some of the themes and ideas that Feng Yingchuk is trying to work through in the numbers series. We moved from Chinese characters to something else. No longer is Feng Yingchuk using shufa, using calligraphy, to write texts. Here, he's moved to writing numbers. The thing about numbers is that numbers have their own sequence that's legible even if you don't understand Chinese characters. So moving through this work, starting at the upper left, we, we can count together 212, 213, 214, 215, 216, etc. So in this work, similar to the works we've just discussed in the process section, we see Feng laying down this first layer of numbers across this sheet of paper in a light gray ink. And then, while the paper is still wet, he is using these inventive script styles in the same way he was using in that last section to create forms that highlight certain parts of this numbered series. So we have these little pieces created with stencils and dry brush again that are in Sanskrit, creating these maybe mountain forms, maybe little skews um, that rise out from the numbers and form the second layer. We have these whirling swirls created with broad sweeps of a wetter brush. We have these circles uh, created with darker ink layered atop the numbers each application of the brush interacting with the wet beneath it in innovative, interesting ways. One interesting thing about number series is that being free of characters, of writing, has allowed Phonemeship to experiment with elements of painting. Meaning, since this is no longer a written text, the Feng is free to experiment with representation. Here's a plane streaking across the sky. Here are these swirling um, uh, landscape forms. They don't necessarily form a Western style landscape. It's not um, a one point perspective. It's a different kind of perspective. One that is combining different views together. It's a kind of experiment to combine these elements that are closer to painting to create a scene that's legible in a painting-like way without being necessarily a representative painting. This approach to uh, layering processes, this approach to um, embedding time, is evident throughout the number series, and we'll see how Feng experiments with these different representative and process-based uh, ideas in his other works. Another work from the Numbers series, uh, one that echoes some of the things we've seen before, but also shows new exciting things that Feng Ming Chip is doing with the um, with contemporary shufa, contemporary calligraphy. In this work, like the large work I just showed you, Feng Ming Chip began by writing a sequence of numbers in a light gray, and once again, he applied a second layer using a wet brush to create this effect that changes as the brush ran out of ink and gradually turned dry. What's new about this is the fact that after the entire surface dried, Feng used an X-Acto knife to cut out these areas here. These two pieces are meant to evoke the hands of a watch broken on the surface of the image. So hour hand, minute hand, smooshed down. It's interesting as an idea, as a, a representative concept, but it's also interesting as a physical representation of time being uh, impressed into this work in uh, unusual and new ways. These cuts, this violence to the paper itself, creates another layer, uh, literally excising a piece of the, uh, of the unified paper and creating a, a layered effect that you can see. So we have 
one layer of the characters, two layer of the watch, three layer of the hands of the watch, and the fourth layer, main chip seal right in the center. Thank you all, it's been a pleasure, and I hope that you all have some time to uh, come to the Fuchomon Gallery and see Tongming Chip's show.